Yo, what is good? William Mydell or Mr. Mydell, if you know me on Instagram, is back. Uh, it's been a while. I know, I know, I know. I have a lot of people messaging me on Facebook um, about tutorials. So I was like, you know what? Let me dig in my archives of photos of some models I've shot in the past. And um, let me get my fingers working. Uh, this is like fun stuff for me. This is what I love doing. And it also keeps my eyes sharp. And I feel like I learn faster when I'm doing it consistently. So uh, I worked on about four or five tutorials. I'll be posting them throughout the next few weeks. And I'll be posting some detailed tutorials on my Patreon. So you look out for that. But for right now, um, let's have fun retouching this model right here. Okay, so uh, this model I shot in Norfolk, Virginia uh, for Influence Hair Care. Uh, pretty girl. Uh, this was actually a wig, I think. Um, it was a, the shoot was for the client's um, color line that he was releasing, uh, color hair products. Very vibrant, colorful, you know. So um, my job was to come in, shoot the model, shoot the products, do the retouching. So I have so many images that uh, I'm still sitting on that, you know, I could practice on it, honestly. It, I guess that's what we're gonna do right now. But as you can see right now, I'm starting off retouching the hair, getting away all the flyaway hair which is a job in itself. It takes time and um, a lot of people don't re retouch photos like this, uh, especially locally. They won't take the time to do this much detail work. But when I'm retouching photos, I'm always retouching as if I'm doing it for um, a high-end client, someone who's really gonna spend like a lot of money or a corporation or business um, who will be putting these images out for millions of people to see. So you always have to think higher than just um, you know, basic, you know, retouching or anything on that level as far as like when it comes to photography. You kind of want to um, shoot for the stars if that makes sense. But this takes a while, as you can see. I mean, but the cleanup looks nice though. I use a healing brush to do that. And then I'll, I'll do um, a frequency, frequency separation. Yeah. And I usually do the hair but i'm trying to see what am i doing right now i'm going for the skin yes yes, okay. yes. yeah okay anyway. what's good about shooting young models um their skin looks great they don't look like they've been out clubbing their whole life you know with super bags under their eyes and crazy acne so i always suggest like shooting models like between 16 and 18 and 20 around that age um good skin and, uh, and, and if uh, paperwork needs to be signed, that's cool. Make sure their parents are there if they're under a certain age. Um, but the point is, their skin looks way better compared to women who've you know, really been out, you know, just working, losing sleep, and you can see the age like showing on their face. I hope nobody takes that offense, but I mean, this is just, this is reality. I'm just speaking on far as like, what's easier for a retoucher and a photographer when it comes to shooting a model for uh, a business or a brand or anything that's gonna be promoting something, beauty sales, and that's just how it is. So um, you always want the best type of client, uh, the best best type of model, and use it. See, I did a little quick liquefy there. Oh, everybody's like, wow, you see, you shrink it. Yes, I shrank her face and I took another year off her face. I just, you know, put her in the gym. But this is what we do as retouchers. I decided to go with this little Neo look. I was kind of feeling like uh, cyberpunk when I saw her hair. In a way, uh, I lit, lit her. I think I had a beauty dish right above her face. You can see I have a, um, a modifier under her eyes, a reflector. And I think I had two rim lights on the back of her. I think I have a, um, a three foot softbox right above her head also as a hair light. I like to use a lot of lights. It creates a lot of dimension. So I was adding the smoke and I was trying to match the colors, but I wasn't really feeling it. You know, I said, let me build a body under her like she's a robot. Cause I was already having in mind, I want, like I said, I want to go cyberpunk. So I want to kind of make it to a cyborg or whatever. So let me build me a robot. I have some pieces of stock images, which I encourage people to do. If you're a photographer, buy stock images. There are photographers out there who shoot a lot of stuff that you can't get to 
that you might need. And if you're not a 3D artist and you, you can just model it in Blender or you know, uh, Cinema 4D or 3D Max, you're gonna have to find a way to uh, create it yourself in Photoshop, create some type of dimension. But uh, this is my attempt to turn her into a cyborg. Trying to give her a little collarbone action, a little, you know, using a pen tool and I'm basically drawing out the shape that I want. Then I'm hitting Control J and I'm just duplicating that piece of a layer. And uh, the bottom layer is the shadow and the top layer is beveled out. Like I said, all this is in, I'm gonna have all this in very detail in my Patreon. It's kind of like a walkthrough. Get you through the speed art, so you don't just have to hear some like dramatic music playing in the background while you're watching it. It's a small commentary. So draw a line on the chin. Cyborgs are different depending on the artist. So I mean, this is just off the cuff. Whatever came to mind, I was thinking about putting like a chin. I was actually thinking about putting some metal pieces under that, you know. But this is why I like a lot of people like myself. I watch a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows like Star Trek and you know, I'm a I'm an anime guy, you know, what they call us nerds, I don't care. I love anime, I love sci-fi, I love uh martial arts, anything martial arts, Japanese ninjas, all that stuff. Um but I love sci-fi too. It's just that it's rare when you see really good sci-fi movies, but they're really good for the matte paintings. You know, you look at the surroundings, I don't like how these artists created the mountains and the skies and these floating mountains and stuff like on like Avatar and um, these movies with these great scenes. I mean, this is what you have to study these scenes. So in your downtime, you have to do research and go look at still shots of movies and see how the cinema photographer came up with these ideas and uh, the art directors and and uh, it really helps you with your vision on when it comes to creating your own personal pieces. Even if they don't, they they, they can't match those. Uh, it's good practice to do it yourself so you can you know at least get close to that. I mean, a lot of these movie sets, I'm pretty sure they work with multiple teams, so it's not just one person creating you know everything. But think big. I didn't like the collarbone, so I'm creating some new ones. The neck part is kind of bent too, up under the right part of her chin. But the face looks good so far. I'm at to work on that bevel on the left bottom part of the cheek. So let me see if I could catch that. But yeah, so looking forward over the next few weeks, I'll be posting. Um, I've been recording everything I do. I told myself that's what I need to start doing, record everything I do. So I'm always working and a lot of people uh, could be seeing what I'm doing. I used to be very active on YouTube, but I just stopped. Cause, um, ooh, I like that. Nice. Yeah, okay. Mm. That's how you play with them bevels like that? I always play with them them uh, bevels in your, um, your layer style on your layers. You'd be surprised what type of uh, outcomes you get. Seriously. But I used to be very active on YouTube. It's just like I wasn't getting the views and I was like, okay, people not you know looking at this stuff. I was like, forget it. I stopped. And it's like now people are just doing this now and I see kids that are getting a lot of views and it's recording takes a lot of time. Editing, you know, if I'm doing 50 million things, I'm in the fashion and I'm you know, other you know, other job, you know, this this takes a lot of time. So you have a lot of people out there with that type of option. But it's no excuses. You know, you have a lot of people who love your work and are interested in knowing, you know, the behind the scenes. So I'm going to start sharing it more. I'm going to just push myself and push myself and push myself. And I appreciate you guys for watching and pushing me as well. Messaging me and asking me and asking me. And that's motivating. So I'm going to get out here and I'm going to do it. I'm going to push myself, drop some more videos. And they're not all going to be, shout out to my makeup artist, Randall. He was like, man, when you talk over your videos, man, don't sound like everyone else. They're going to be all like, in here on this layer, we want blah, blah, blah. He said, like, man, just be yourself and then talk. I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. So, I mean, granted, on the detail tutorials, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be talking like that. But uh, for speed arts and uh, other things on my channel, 
I think I'm gonna just be more, you know, laid back and relaxed the way I am right now, cause that's just me. Uh, on the detailed ones, any paid tutorials, yeah, I'll talk very detailed so uh, you can understand exactly what I'm doing. So, uh, but yeah, you can see I'm adding this visor. I was, I was gonna put like a little HUD on it, like, you know, but the temperatures and direction, all that stuff you'll see on there, but I'll say, nah, I'll just leave it like that. But for this flare, cause I know I wanted something kind of like, you know, coming into the picture, but I muted it for a while, I think, because I want to keep working on the image as a whole. Cause I started to draw on some hair. As you can see the hair on the left side over there, I wasn't digging it, but I tried to go with this here. I was thinking like maybe like on the, the, pan, uh, the side of a panel of a ship, but this right here didn't work out. I even duplicated it and put it on the other side of her neck. And I was like, you know what? Between the blend modes and me just trying to uh, make it into a transparency background layer where her skin like pops through the bottom of it, that didn't work. And I eventually did away with this. But as you can see, it's like the struggle, right? I'm trying to come up with new ideas, but that's what you have to do. You have to just try it, even if it doesn't make sense right now. If it popped in your head, then it, it, it was a cool idea, but some some ideas aren't that cool. Yeah, I think this right here was probably when I got the skin trying to blend in. I had to get the brush to, uh, let me see, let me see. I don't know, man. I kind of like the purple though. Yeah, I um, did away with it. I even did it with the lips too. I tried to like switch it up. I couldn't get the color of the lips I want. So I think I did away with that also, but you have to play around, you know, you never know what kind of outcome. So sometimes the edit that might take a few hours might take, I think I, on this right here, this took two days to make, I had to stop and come back the next day and let my eyes rest and uh, get different perspective or different ideas about it. I always want to do that. You want to take a break from the computer and just walk away and let your eyes rest. Cause, um, you'll think everything looks good right now. And then you'll post it and like days later, you're like, oh man, you know, I really don't like that. I shouldn't have did that. I mean, it's already up now, you know? And that one post might get a lot of likes and you don't want to take it down and, and them, them same likes might not come back the second time you post it. So let your eyes take a break, come back. I have to tell myself that all the time. Sometimes I'll, I'll be bucking, but it's good. You'll see stuff from a different light. I like playing with shadows too. So I use the selective color to uh, layer a lot. And on the curves, I, I just like to up the shadows and, and add color in the shadows. It just gives a different look. More of a, uh, I won't say natural, but kind of cinematic, you know. And, uh, just me filling out the hair on the outside because it just looks too straight to me. I think I tried a few hair brushes. They didn't come out too good for me. So I think I just ended up just you know, drawing it on. This is looking good though. I'm trying to see how I can sell this as an NFT. I'm trying to get into that. But I'm gonna keep pushing and keep pushing. Now, yeah, here's a... Um, frequency separation on the hair. I like to do this sometimes to like kind of blend the colors, but sometimes it look too fake, so you don't want to overdo it. Gotta be careful about that. Add more light, get more volume. Add the flare again. Playing with the black and white layers. I do this, I like to add contrast to the black and white layers. Now I'm just putting on final color grades. Seeing what colors I like. Then I like stamp it out, go in the Nick software, add a nice glow, and just brush in the spots where I want to see the glow at. Kind of make it pop out. And try some different colors. And that's it. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, like the video and share it. Please subscribe to my channel and um, for exclusive content, come join us on Patreon. All right, I'll be posting some some really good resources in there, 
and not just for photographers and retouches, but models also. I'm gonna drop a lot of good gems in there. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.